Hello everyone out there, Peter Harris with Commercial Property Advisors. I hope you're all doing well today. Just imagine a $445,000 profit on a single six unit apartment building. Is that possible? Yes, it is. One of our students, Yvonne, did it. Actually, he did it multiple times. And in this video, I'm going to break down for you two things. I'm going to break down for you the process, the six step process behind me that we use to help him do that. And number two, I'm going to, we're going to interview him so he can share with you in his own words how these six processes took place so that you can see that you can do what he did. All right, let's get started with this six step process of buying a small apartment building and producing almost a half million dollars in profits on a single deal. Okay. All right. So he started, our students started off with a HELOC. Okay. A home equity line of credit. How many of you have HELOCs, right? I have a line of credit on your home. And what have you done with it? All right. This is what you should be doing if you want to create massive wealth for yourself and, and your future uh, uh, generations. Okay. Now, so he took out a HELOC on his home. From the HELOC, he purchased um, his apartment building. And I'm just not going to say buy your apartment building. You have to learn how to do it uh, conventionally through a bank loan and, and creatively. And in this process, in this six-step process that the student, Yvonne, will explain to you, you'll learn what the process is to do something creative. So we're going to HELOC. You're going to go to uh, buy your apartment building. You're going to renovate the units to get the rents up. Okay, and then you're going to, by doing this process here, you're going to force the appreciation. You're going to force the value upward, and you're going to multiply the HELOC here, the, the number here. I think 50,000, we turn it into, we multiply by eight times by doing just this process. And you'll see that process in a second. So once the process, once the, the property is stable here, and you enforce the appreciation, uh, you can go into your cash flow and hold stage here. You're going to hold it for a while. And then after that, you're going to either sell the property, take your profits, or you're going to sell and do a 1031 exchange. The 1031 exchange is where you're going to sell the property and you're going to take all the profits for it into a larger property so you can defer any capital gains taxes. That's a wealth multiplier right there. And if you want to learn how to do that, a video will appear on the screen so you can see we break that down uh, quite uh, well for you. All right. So this is the six step process. Uh, this is our student. Okay. This could be you. All right. So now what I want to do next is go through his uh, short interview where he breaks down the six step process with each property. And then we'll come back and I'll break down the process for you so you can put yourself into his shoes. Let's do that next. All right, everyone. Here we are with the interview from one of our uh, prized students. Uh, Yvonne. Yvonne, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Peter. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Yeah, we're going to jump right into it. I did a little intro uh, there for you prior. Let's jump into it. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name is Ivan. I reside in Maine, which is one of the coldest states in the United States. <laughs> day to day, I do online e-commerce, online retail. I used to build websites for others, but now I mostly do it for myself. So mostly doing web stuff, online stuff, and real estate was always my hobby and side hustle. Okay, great. So uh, tell us why why commercial real estate, uh, Ivan? So what are what are some of the driving factors? What what's your why of jumping into this business? Uh, it's actually a long story. I once suddenly stumbled upon real estate in general. I never even looked at it as an investment vehicle. I had my own financial advisor who always put all my money into like mutual funds and stocks, actually stocks I did myself, but mutual funds. And then once I stumbled upon real estate and then I just got hooked. So I went into all these online forums and started reading. Um, I started listening to podcasts, but mostly like 98% of conversations were about flipping houses. So I always thought that, you know, that's what real estate is all about. You flip the houses, that's how you make money. But it never really attracted me because you had to deal with tons of contractors and it almost became your new full-time job because it involves a lot of time and efforts to execute unless you hire like a giant team of people that now you need to manage. So given that I had like a full-time 
job, I didn't really have time for all of that. But I kept learning about real estate because I, I still wanted to do it. And then one day, actually, it was one of the podcasts where I heard somebody saying that, you know, most people they start residential and then some of them graduate towards commercial after years of doing flips. And then it basically, it was like a shining star in front of me. I saw it clear. Why waste time doing all the residential stuff? Why don't I just jump straight into commercial? And then I started Googling about commercial real estate and all this, what all those terms mean, like NY, cash on cash, all that stuff. And then I found your course on one of the platforms. I don't remember what it was, Teachable, Coursera, like one of those. Um, it was either free or it was like 10 bucks. It was like really cheap to get in. Mm -hmm. And I just signed up and I binge watched it, you know, for two days, like morning through night, I just watched you. Because <laughs> everything you said made sense to me. I come from, you know, math and computer background. So anything that has logic in it, not emotions, is what I like. So yeah. after spending two days watching your videos and absorbing the content, I was like, sold. So I told my wife right away, hey, I'm signing up. <laughs> and then I made a call and then uh, the rest is history. So here I am. All right. Great, great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, you know, the, the rest is history. We have uh, one of your deals that you sold, you made uh, uh, $445,000. And one deal you sold, the second deal, I think you made close to 400000 and we have right. two others that you're going to sell. And, and then, you know, you're going to, as a result, you're going to buy a larger uh, commercial commercial property. So let's jump into those deals. Give us a bit of background on those deals because uh, you, you took our creative strategies and you executed them perfectly, right? So let's talk about your deals. Let's talk about the first two. Okay. So both of the these properties that I just sold, I bought from the same sellers. Uh, I found the property owner in October and they were not really motivated to sell at all, mm -hmm. uh, but they were ready to listen. And then I approached them and I told them I like their property and I want to buy it. And they wanted to sell it for 350. Now this numbers look like, you know, 350 for six units sounds like <laughs> a steal. But back then it wasn't that bad. It was still a steal, but it wasn't that bad. And then it was an older couple. So... I went and met with them and they were managing the property themselves. It needed a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Husband was the one doing all the fixes. Wife was the one doing all the lease ops and dealing with tenants and all of the issues. So they didn't want to get rid of the property, but it looked like they were kind of tired of it. Not really tired, but like they've been doing it for too long and they were ready to, to exit. So during our negotiations, they disclosed that they own another property, which is also a six unit. And if, if they consider selling this one, they would be willing to sell the other one too. Because if they exit the game, you know, they want to exit it completely. So I got excited and I said, yeah, I'll buy both of them. And we started negotiating. So that was October. I ended up closing in July of next year. So I kept working on working on that. And at the end of the day, what we did is, you know, they were like older couples. So they were ready to retire. So we structured a creative deal where I bought one of them was bank financing. So I just put like 20% down uh, towards the you know mortgage. And then the other one, we negotiated seller financing. So all I did is I paid $1,000 down for the property and the rest was a loan that the seller carried for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. We did um, we did fixed payments. We didn't do amortization because they were ready to retire, so they needed to rely on fixed income every month. So we approximated what the monthly payment would be at, at the interest rate that was back then, I think it was like four points, and now it's a lot higher. So we approximated what the payment would be every month if we did amortize the loan. And then we just picked around the number close to it. And I said, I'll be paying you this exact amount every month for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it ballooned and I had to pay the, the the difference so it worked for them they didn't have to pay capital gains on two sales at once mm -hmm. um, it worked for me because i could buy a six unit for a thousand bucks <laughs> <laughs> i also kind of shifted the prices so at the end of our negotiations we agreed that i'm gonna buy each for 275 even though they wanted to sell the first one for 350 mm -hmm. and the second one for 300 
all the back and forth, I negotiated it down to 275 for each. But when time came to finance one of the properties, I told them, hey, it's still the same sum of money going to you, but to me it matters because I go to the bank. So how about I buy the one where I go to the bank for 250 and the one that we sell or finance, I'll pay you 300 for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they said, sure, because they didn't care. Yeah. So And plus they got less profit in year one, so they didn't have to pay as much capital gains uh, same mm -hmm. way. So I bought the one that we financed through the bank for 250. So I put only like $50,000 down and the other one I bought for 300, but I, my cash out of pocket was only a thousand bucks. Yeah. So let's stop right there. So we have, uh, we have one, uh, one couple, right. And, um, and we have two properties, uh, both six units, one you purchased for $250,000 and you put down 20%. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And then the, the second property that, uh, you know, they wanted a total of, uh, what five, five fifty. The second one you purchased for 300,000 and, uh, and that will sell their financing with you putting, putting $1,000 down as a down payment. Correct. Right. And then, uh, then they finance the rest. Right. Correct. And then, um, all right. So, so let's continue because the, you know, that's great. Uh, that is awesome. But there's even a better part when you sold the properties and, and uh, you made a bunch of money. So let's get to that part. Right. Yeah. So, so, uh, first of all, I never looked at real estate as my primary source of income. I always treated it as a secondary source of income. So I never relied on the cash flow coming from the properties. I just wanted to highlight that because you know, the second property obviously cash flowed really well from day one because, you know, I didn't have any money into it. It was like six large units that were paying well. So what I did is all the cash flows that came came in from the properties, I always just kept them in the accounts. I never pulled, pulled any cash out, but those properties obviously needed some love. So whenever we had to do rehab or, you know, when we had a turn, we always had to do something. So I used that money that the property was producing mm -hmm. to do all the rehabs. And yeah. once in a while, I would have to put in some, a little bit more money, especially on the other two properties, those were more distressed. But most of the times it was the property itself that paid for all the rehabs and for the duration of the hold, I didn't really care about that money. So to me, it was almost like putting it in 401k. You just put it there and you forget it. So it was similar here. I never relied on that cash flow to pull it out and live off it. And I yep. think that's that's the key to growth. Like if you really want to make a lot of money, build wealth using real estate, ideally would have the primary source of income, at least initially, where you can keep making money, you can keep you know supporting your mortgages because they always want you to back the mortgages. And then the properties, whatever money they make, you just take it and you reinvest into the same properties or into mm -hmm. buying new properties. That's how you grow exponentially. Yep. So um, you nurse the properties through a few years, right? And now you're getting ready to sell the properties. So uh, let's get to the uh, to the good part. What, what did you oh, yeah. end up selling them for? Yeah, your question. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the property that I bought for 250 through the bank, I ended up selling for, I think it was 675. It was six, 650. So we did at least at 675, but then they found some issues with the roof and, you know, some minor stuff and we just gave them a seller credit. So we ended up selling for 649, so 650. Um, and again, I bought it for 250. So it was like more than double. Yeah. And that's what, again, Another reason why I like commercial real estate, the 20% down payment controls the asset, which is five times bigger. Like in yeah. stocks, if you invest a thousand, your thousand bucks is making 8% or whatever it makes. Yeah. Yeah. With real estate, if you invest $1,000, $5,000 is making you a return. Yeah. Plus it grows over time and there are tons of other benefits, but yeah. So that's yeah. another reason why I like commercial so you, real estate. You, uh, so on this one um, six unit, you put down 50,000, right? And then yep. as a result of 50,000, you controlled the property Correct. and over a couple of years of cash flow on the property, fixing it up, uh, that 50,000 turned into how much? Over $400,000. <laughs> Correct. Okay. 445. So that's like yeah. eight, almost nine times the money. Yeah. And that's just, I, I think I bought it in 19. So sold in 
22. So yeah, it's like three years. So nine times yeah. in three years. So that's like yeah. three X per year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and how much of the rehab did you do yourself? Zero, <laughs> right? You uh, have property managers, correct. Do it. you have your workers do it, right? And you correct. didn't, you didn't lift a wrench or climb on a roof at all. Right. Correct. But, but, but I had to manage all those guys. It's, yeah. you know, it's not, don't get me wrong. Like real estate is very passive. You can like, you know, you can run a primary business while doing this on the side, but you still need to be involved. Cause if you are not, then yeah. it's, it's just not going to work. So you don't have exactly. to deal with the day to day, but whenever there is a, especially when there is a rehab, you want to be involved. You want to look at contractors. You want to read them. You want to look yeah. at different quotes. Yeah. And usually, even if your property management company is managing all the boots on the ground stuff, you're still the one making all the large mm -hmm. decisions on, you know, what you're going to do and who you're going to evict, or, you know, yeah. what kind of rehab you're going to do. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had to be involved and I always had your guidance and um, thanks a lot for, for you and commercial property advisors in general, because, you know, without you guys, I wouldn't be able to generate so much net profit by buying and holding commercial real estate for just like a few years so thank you so much for that i truly appreciate yeah. all your learnings and you know that's yeah. what gave me the new path to building wealth yeah exactly thank you so um that was the first property that you sold okay the second property the second six unit you sold right yeah the second six unit i bought it for thousand bucks Initially, I made, I think, like 6,000 a month in rents, and they were like way below market. Then eventually, we bumped everything to market. So it was cash flow on like crazy. I think it got up to almost 9,000 a month. So that was like a cat cow, and I put only like 1,000 bucks in. So it was definitely unlimited returns. It was like yeah. just printing money for, you know, yeah. no reason. That's, a, that's amazing, right? Uh, it, should, it should be legal. You put, you put $1,000 down. Correct. And then after you get the units fixed up, you're producing nine thousand dollars a month. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so you eventually sold that property, and for for how much? That one was sold for six seventy five. Yeah. So uh, that's what we asked for it, but then during the inspections, the the buyer found some issues with the sewer system, even though it wasn't really an issue, but. They wanted it fixed and they got a quote that it's going to cost like 20 grand. So we just split it. So I gave them 10 and they, they were going to invest their own 10 to fix it. Mm -hmm. So I ended up netting like 665 mm -hmm. on, the, on the sales price. Yeah. But again, I bought it for thousand dollars. So that's like yeah. 665 times what I paid yeah. for it. Yeah. So that is, uh, so you made about $398,000 in the second one. Right. Correct. Because I still had outstanding mortgage. So yeah, yeah the balance was yeah. about four hundred thousand. So that's in, mm -hmm. in just like three years. Amazing. So we, we look at the first property you made uh four 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 hundred forty-five thousand in profits uh that you have in your 1031 exchange account. You Correct. have three hundred and ninety-eight thousand dollars in a second property, so a total of eight hundred and forty-three thousand dollars. Uh, on two small apartment buildings. That's pretty amazing, Ivan. It's pretty Correct. amazing. Mm -hmm. I know. And back in the day when I worked with financial advisor, you know, the goal was like make a million, have a million in your retirement account. Mm -hmm. Now, as time went by, like just a few short years, I realized that, you know, million dollars is not going to buy you a successful retirement. You need to have cash flow. Cash flow is key. If you just have money sitting in the bank, you're going to spend it quickly. If you keep doing real estate and then you retire while holding some assets, the cash flow, yep. you, you're basically set for life. You have income coming in without you having to work. Yep. You can always give it to your heirs and transfer wealth that way. And if you, you mentioned 1031 exchange, that's what I learned from you as well. When you sell the property, uh, you're supposed to pay taxes, but the government allows you to defer tax payments if you buy the next property of this of the similar or a larger size, mm -hmm. and you have to follow a certain protocol. But if you do it correctly, you don't have to pay that tax. So even though those numbers we just talked about are pre-tax dollars, and if I had to pay taxes, I would pay like two to three hundred thousand in taxes on that profit. If you do 1031 exchange, that amount gets deferred, and then if you yeah. keep doing exchanges throughout your life, you never pay taxes, and then when you die, that amount gets written off so that's how wealthy people <laughs> create generational wealth they you yeah. know they transfer all the wealth to their kids all the taxes that they owe to the government or to irs 
they just get ridden off. So it's an amazing vehicle to build wealth. Yeah, yeah, it is quite amazing. Now, <clears throat> so those were the the uh, two properties. You you purchased uh, two more. It's a total of four properties. And for the for the sake of time, we won't go into those two others. But the two others you have in a market too will also be uh, 1031 exchanging. So we won't go into those. So uh, what I want to do now, I want to move on now that you established yourself, you made a bunch of money uh, with us and with this, with these uh, two props that you sold for total. What's next for you? Again, I want to keep growing. I want to keep buying. Now the market is shifting. Interest rates go up. So it becomes more of a buyer's market. So it's a really good time to buy or start looking for good deals. So definitely keep going because you know, if you can make a million bucks in just a few short years, just think of what can happen over like 10 to 20 years, mm -hmm. like build true, true generational wealth. So that's what yeah. my goal is. I want to be completely financially independent and keep building wealth. Yeah. So we calculated, you calculated, so you made, uh, you know, 843,000 for these uh, two properties in your pocket today. And then the other two are for sale. That's an additional 600,000. So so in about two or three years, right? You've you're you're going to make 1.4 million dollars in profits, net profits, right? After paying the mortgages off and and everything, that's quite amazing. That's quite amazing and very inspiring for for those watching. Now, Yvonne, um, many people want to be uh, would like to get to where you are and be where you are. So, what are one or two things that you can share with them to help them get started, just like you? I would say don't overthink it. I, I was one of those guys. I spent half a year to a year just listening to podcasts and reading books and forums and thinking that, you know, I need to spend a lot more time learning before I can execute. But mm -hmm. once I signed up for your program, it was just like you gave all the information that I needed to try to, to know the lingo, to, you know, to know how to talk to realtors, how to talk to property man uh, managers, uh, how to find the deals, how to work with all these people using their lingo and the the way they do business and became like a second nature i just had to go and do exactly what you told me to do and it worked i was surprised like every time i would go and talk to somebody using the lingo that i never used in my life they would like understand me and they would like they would have an intelligent conversation with me so it was initially it was really uh weird but your program is the one that pushed me into actually executing because i was overthinking i was like i wouldn't be able to just pull off the trigger and go start doing it by, by myself maybe i would but it would it might have taken another two years and if you think of the two years that went by like i would have missed out on this opportunity to make like over a million dollars so my first advice is don't overthink it and just get started you know peter has all the materials you need to be successful to be holding your hand along the way you know, they have tons of videos, trainings, contracts, everything you need is there. There are weekly calls you can jump on. So anytime you have questions, you'll have them answered real time. If you want the answer sooner or you don't have time to jump on that call, you can always message Peter uh, through the portal and he'll get back to you usually within a few hours. So any questions you have, you'll have full support. And it's a truly amazing program because it forces you to go do it. And once you do it and you do enough of it, it becomes a second nature, but you need that initial push. Mm -hmm. So that was my first advice. Second advice, I would say always learn, even though Peter will give you all the ropes, the markets are shifting. Like right now, the interest rates are going up. It's shifting. It's a different cycle. So go to real estate conferences, read real estate books, listen to podcasts, because you'll just hear from some intelligent people who have been in the game for a very long time. And they'll be talking about different asset classes and how they, because there are so many ways to make money in real estate. And if you hear enough of it, you'll realize that it doesn't really matter which asset class you deal with. You can always make money on it if you do if you do it right. So just constantly learn. And then one other advice I would have, have the second income source. I met some people who buy like a 10 unit building and they retire at the age of like 35. <laughs> and I'm like, why would you not do anything else? They're like, oh, I make enough cash flow where I can survive and I love my lifestyle. I don't have to work. I just manage the building. But if you have that mindset, you'll never grow because all the cash flow coming from the building is basically you rely on it to live your life. So, you know, you can't buy more properties because you have fixed income. If there is a big issue with the property, you know, God forbid you have a fire or like something big major happens, 
you lose your income, you might lose your property. Don't, if you buy your initial deals, even though it might be tough, just go find money somewhere else. Just use real estate as a secondary income stream and treat it that way. Always reinvest back. Don't pull money out for as long as you can. That's the only way for you to truly grow this wealth vehicle. Yeah, awesome. Well, Ivan, this has been uh, this has been great. Thank you for those two bits of wisdom there that I totally agree with. So this has been awesome. So yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you for uh, being part of the program. And and uh, you know what I really enjoyed uh, between you and I was our one-on-one -on -one interactions. Yes, we have the we have the group calls every every week. Uh, we have the mastermind call with our high-level students, but what we also do, and I also do the one-on-one with the students. And I think that's where you and I really uh, connected and you really grasped uh, the, the program and, and what to do. And that's when you, you really accelerated and really understood the business. And this is such a relationship-based business. And it doesn't matter just how much money you have or anything like that, but you, you've just uh, kicked butt here, Ivan. So I just want to say congratulations. Thank you, Peter. All thanks to you. Thank you. Yeah. And, and also too, uh, last, let me say this, uh, you have uh, officially graduated from our program, right? Yes, that's I did. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Yvonne. So hey, thank you so much. And uh, you have a, a great rest of the day and uh, we'll be talking soon. Thank you, Peter. All right, everyone. Hey, thank you for uh, uh, hanging out with me. Welcome back. And uh, wasn't Yvonne just incredible, an incredible young man, very wise, don't you think? Well, do me a favor, just give him a little bit of encouragement, just uh, give him a high five or congrats in the comments box, just tell him to go, go, go. He's an, an amazing young man, all right? Now, what I wanna do here is quickly summarize the video to put yourself in Yvonne's shoes. I'm gonna start off by get, by sharing with you, the, just summarize with three, three, the three quick tips. From Yvonne. Number one is, Yvonne says don't overthink, right? So what he meant by that is, uh, you know, he's a very smart guy, computer scientist, computer engineer, uh, d designing this, and you should see his work. It's incredible what he designs. And um, uh, he says to get a step-by-step -step process. So that helps an engineer brain, like mine, like ours, get to the next level of what you want to accomplish. Get a step-by-step -step process, and that's what we do here at Commercial Property Advisors. So we gave him a, that six-step process that he just followed, okay? And guess what, right? It's not a get-rich-quick thing. It took him years to do this, but look at him now, okay? Number two, uh, Yvonne suggests having a second in income source uh, while building your real estate portfolio. He believes it's safer. I do too, right? So I tell people, don't leave your job right away. Do both. Invest and then it's work, keep everything going because we need the excess cash flow from your job. We need the credit to apply for loans. We need all of that. We need your family to be, to feel safe while you're doing this business. Okay. So it just makes sense. Okay. You can leave later when it's ready, but uh, for now, just stay there and invest as much as you can. Number three, this is, this was not one of Yvonne's tips uh, during the video. This was after the video, what, what you sh shared with me, what he was doing. And his tip was to don't buy your, your, your Tesla with a HELOC, right? He didn't say this exactly, but that's what he meant, right? So as you recall, Yvonne started off with the, with the HELOC. And, and again, some of you have HELOCs. What are you doing with them? I hope you are investing it wisely. Okay. That's all I have to say. All right. Um, so don't buy your Tesla with your HELOC. Instead, use your HELOC to buy your apartments and have your apartments buy your Tesla. Got it? Okay, that's exactly what he did. All right, okay. All right, everyone. Hey, thank you for hanging out with me. And if you'd like to put yourself directly in Yvonne's shoes, we have a mentoring program. Uh, our, apply to be uh, my protege, and the link will appear on the screen. Also, too, I have a, uh, a free book I'd like to offer you, No Obligations. The link will appear there. It's called Commercial uh, real estate investing for beginners, right? And also, lastly, go ahead and just subscribe or hit the like button of our, of our uh, YouTube channel. And then it's number one in the space, and that's because of you. So thank you very much. All right, everyone. Thank you again so much, and I'll see you at the next video.